Hare Krishna. So before I begin, I seek the the prayers and the blessings of all superior Vaishnava sitting here. All Prabhuji's and Mataji's were sitting here. Please kindly pray to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and to Srila Prabhupada that may the right words come from my mouth in the right time, in the right spirit, glorifying the wonderful pastime of Gajendra. I am not qualified as far as age, experience, realization, knowledge or any practical realization of Bhakti is concerned. But please bless me so that by your prayers may Krishna as Paramatma speak through my words. It is a tradition that before we start hearing from Srimad Bhagavatam, we glorify Srimad Bhagavatam. Because Srimad Bhagavatam is not a book. Srimad Bhagavatam is a person. Srimad Bhagavatam is Sakshat Bhagavan Shri Krishna. Sometimes we feel that, oh, this is paper and ink, white paper and black ink. So this is book. But Srimad Bhagavatam is Vangmai Swarup, is the literature incarnation of Krishna. Shri Krishna can manifest in any form. When he manifests as rock, it is Giriraj. When he manifests as water, in different contexts, different holy rivers are referred to. Ganga, Yamuna and ultimately Sri Radha Kund. When Krishna appears as our living guidance, it is Sri Guru. When Krishna agrees to appear as sound, it is the holy name. When Krishna appears in the form of land, it is Sri Dham Vrindavan. And similarly, when Krishna agrees to appear in the form of book, the books are Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. So let us offer our prayers to this personality, Shri Krishna, who is manifesting in his book incarnation. Let us pray to him that let, by the mercy of our parampara, may the realizations of the Bhagavatam enter our discussion. So let us offer a prayer. Please repeat. Paramananda Pathaya Prema Varshi Aksharayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Shri Krishnaya Namostume Paramananda Pathaya Srimad Bhagavatam is ready to fill us with supreme bliss for those who read and study Srimad Bhagavatam, Pathan, Adhyayan, those who study Srimad Bhagavatam as their life, for them, for those readers, Srimad Bhagavatam provides Paramananda. There is Jad Ananda. Hmm? There is happiness of the flesh, which we all aspire for. <laughs> that is why we are in this body. So we are all looking for pleasure of the skin. Hmm? That is Jad. That is temporary, that is flickering, it, it has an end. But Srimad Bhagavatam gives Parama Ananda Pathaya. For those who read Srimad Bhagavatam as a student in proper parampara and hear it from the lips of great personalities like Srila Prabhupada and his followers, for them their lives are filled with happiness. And Prema Varshi Aksharayate through the syllables of the Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a shower of pure love for Krishna. Some scriptures give dharma, artha, kama, and some even go ahead to give moksha. But Srimad Bhagavatam gives prema, the ultimate sadhya, the ultimate goal for all of us. Simply getting liberated from material existence doesn't solve our problem. Our problem is forgetfulness of Krishna. We at the present moment don't have rati or asakti or love for Krishna. So when we get filled with bhava or prema, pure love for Krishna, that solves the problem. So Srimad Bhagavatam through the aksharas, hmm? Through the syllables of Srimad Bhagavatam, fill our life with shower of prema. Therefore, sarvada, sarvasevyaya. Da refers to time. Yada, tada, sarvada, ekada. 
So Sarvada means always, Sarva means all of us, say Vyaya. Srimad Bhagavatam should be served by all of us at all times to come. By worshipping Srimad Bhagavatam, by reading Srimad Bhagavatam, by studying Srimad Bhagavatam, by speaking Srimad Bhagavatam, by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam and by discussing Srimad Bhagavatam. Why is it so important? The last line says, Shri Krishnaya Namostume. Oh Srimad Bhagavatam, I am glorifying and worshipping you because you are Sakshat Bhagavan Shri Krishna. So Paramananda Pathaya Prema Varshaksharayate. Your syllables are filled with love and therefore you fill us with love and happiness. Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Shri Krishnaya Namostam. Therefore to that Shri Krishna Bhagavan who appears in the form of the literature, we bow down and we serve all the time. So with this verse, understanding the glory of Srimad Bhagavatam, we pray to Srimad Bhagavatam and we begin. Now this literature, Srimad Bhagavatam, talks about different pastimes and interestingly the Srimad Bhagavatam goes from one chapter to another to another to another in the form of conversations, discussions. Whenever there is a discussion between two people it is very exciting, yes? If you are seeing a play, a drama and only one person is speaking, he is standing in front of you and speaking, after some time it gets boring. But if there are two people talking and the third person comes into the picture and the fourth person comes and there is discussion between everyone, everybody is attentive, nobody sleeps. So our Shukdev Goswami is such a genius that he scripts this whole Srimad Bhagavatam and it goes in one conversation after another, after another, after another. Similarly, Krishna also in the Bhagavad Gita gives this whole nectar of Gita, Gita Amritam, in the form of questions and answers. Out of the different stories which are described in the Srimad Bhagavatam, this section that we are discussing today is glorious. For so many ages, by so many sages, by so many devotees, in so many places, this pastime has been sung. Practically in this assembly, there is nobody who has not heard of Gajendra. Right from the time we are children, we are born in this world, one of the first stories we are taught is the story of Gajendra. In fact, in my personal experience, the first story from the Bhagavatam that I heard as a child was Gajendra Moksha. And in our own typical baby talk, we would talk about Gajendra, two minutes, the whole story is over. How the crocodile caught and how the elephant cried and how the Supreme Lord came and Gajendra is saved. So this story all of us know, it's very entertaining. But what are the principal lessons, what are the details out of this pastime which make our life meaningful is very important. That is why we are all discussing this. So the pastime of Gajendra in the first three chapters of the 8th canto, it's a long discussion of course, but in this section of the discussion, verse 31, we find till now the mention of the great king, the king of elephants and not normal elephants, heavenly elephants, Gajendra described. Gajendra lived in a region called as the Trikuta, one of the heavenly abodes and was very very powerful. Now we know how powerful an elephant can be. If an elephant uses his trunk, there is destruction. If the elephant uses his feet, there is destruction. In fact, there is destruction even when the elephant uses his tail. So a worldly elephant of this world can cause so much havoc, so many destructions. There are so many videos we find elephants just climbing on the car and the car is finished. Mad elephant gets into a jungle and everything is uprooted. So one elephant can be so destructive. What to speak of heavenly elephant? And now what to speak of the king of heavenly elephants? 
very respectable position, very strong. Gajendra was effulgent and very influential. People respected Gajendra. Whenever and wherever Gajendra walked, all the animals bowed down. They all bowed down. In fact, those who didn't like Gajendra, they also bowed down out of fear. That if I don't bow down to him, he'll kill me. So better I bow down. So there was respect, there was honor, there was name, fame, there was strength, there was position, everything that you can aspire for, Gajendra had it. And more importantly, he had a very wonderful family with many wives, not just one wife and not just one child, many children out of many wives, big family, lot of fan following, lot of friends, lot of well-wishers. People always glorified Gajendra. So Gajendra had everything that you and I in this world, in the material sense, would aspire for. All of us aspire for wealth. When we get little fame, we think we have become Indra. We want honor, recognition. We like to be strong. We like to be appreciated. We like to be intelligent. And we like to be effulgent and influential. And Gajendra had it all. And as most of the rich and aristocratic people would decide, Gajendra decided to go for a vacation. His family said, it's long time, we have not taken a break. Let's go for a vacation. So Gajendra with all his friends, his wives, his children, his well-wishers, they all went to a very wonderful, serene atmosphere. Very peaceful. Birds are chirping, bees are humming. And then Gajendra looked to his wives and hinted towards a very beautiful pond filled with lotus flowers. So it was considered to be a very romantic and very serene atmosphere. Gajendra felt, ah, this is what I want. Break, chutti. Break from whatever I am. He entered. And to play with his own men, he was splashing water. With his trunk, he picked up water, was splashing on them. They were enjoying, Gajendra was enjoying. And at that moment of utter enjoyment, in an unexpected manner came a crocodile. <laughs> a crocodile came out of nowhere when Gajendra was so happy and blissful and in one minute Gajendra was enjoying at this level and immediately the jaws, the strong sharp teeth of a crocodile caught the feet of Gajendra. Now for us in this world if we have a paper cut we have a problem. Are you crying? Galti se chaku while cutting fruits and vegetables. Galti se chaku lag jaye to hamlo bhaktong ko bolte hain Allah wala machate ki hat cut gaya, ungli cut gayi. But here is Gajendra whose feet was caught by the jaws of a crocodile. And Gajendra had two kinds of pain. One was the physical pain and the other was the emotional pain. Now externally he was very strong, elephant, very strong. But inside they are still sensitive, soft. <laughs> so the crocodile's jaws and teeth just penetrated, sunk through the flesh of Gajendra. He started biting and chewing. Mahaprasade Govinde. Shri Shri Radha Rasvi Hari Bhagavan Ki Jai Shri Shri Gaur Nitai Bhagavan Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Shri Shri Sita Ram Lakshman Anuman Bhagavan Ki Jai Shri La Prabhupada Ki The crocodile started chewing. Blood started oozing. Gajendra was an excruciating pain, physical pain. And now what was the emotional pain? The emotional pain was the fact that such a big person not elephant, heavenly elephant, that the king of heavenly elephants who protects everyone is now begging to his own men for his protection. This is dishonor. To be insulted in public amongst people who glorify you 
is big dishonor. Yes? If there are 100 people who love you and glorify you and one person comes out of nowhere and in public starts criticizing. Big dishonor. And just like Bali Maharaj could not stand false. He was so attached to truth. Couldn't stand falsity. For him, falsity was worse than death. And just like Draupadi, for whom disrobing was worse than death. Because for her, chastity was most important. So just like Bali Maharaj valued truth, just like Draupadi valued chastity, Gajendra valued honor. For Bali, falsity was worse than death. For Draupadi, being disrobed in public, in front of superiors, in front of her own men, is worse than death. Similarly, for Gajendra, to be in such a pathetic condition, crying out to his own men whom he protects. Are Baba, please save me. Protect me. I am begging you for my protection. This dishonor was worse than death. He was shattered. And if we carefully analyze the pastime of Draupadi and the pastime of Gajendra run in parallel. Draupadi had everything, Gajendra had everything. Draupadi was very powerful. Although she was a lady, Krishna, very powerful. Gajendra was very powerful. In less than a minute, in public, Draupadi was being disrobed in less than a minute. In public, Gajendra was being dishonored. And initially, both of them cried for their protection. Draupadi was crying around, please protect me. She looked to her husbands, she looked to her superiors, she looked everywhere for help, but nobody could help. Similarly, Gajendra was in a pathetic condition where he was asking his own children, please protect me. What can be worse? But the interesting point is, both of them tried and the parallel is both of them failed. Draupadi tried protecting herself, but she failed. Gajendra tried protecting himself, but he failed. So the first lesson out of the story of Gajendra that we can learn as sadhakas is the fact that all of us are struggling with crocodiles in our life. All of us are Gajendras in some bit or the other. It's not that this story is somewhere and I am somewhere. We are connected. Gajendra was king. We also think we are kings in some place or the other. And this crocodile who caught Gajendra and caused so much havoc in our life is the crocodile of material nature. We think we are very happy. But every second we are getting closer to death so you've seen a crocodile how the crocodile eats puts its mouth person is 10 percent inside and after some time another chew 25 percent inside another chew 45 percent inside and in no time the hundred per the percent is 100 percent in similarly in our life the crocodile of time factor the crocodile of death is chewing us. Every sunrise and sunset, we are one day inside the mouth of the crocodile. The pond is the material world. So just like Gajendra decided to go and enjoy in the pond, we by our own swaichha, are we are in this material world trying to enjoy vacation. And the crocodile of death, the crocodile of suffering, the crocodile of maya, the crocodile of time factor, the crocodile of material nature is chewing us one minute after another, after another, after another, after another. But do you know what the sad part is? The sad part is Gajendra realized that he is being chewed, but we are bleeding, but we are not realizing. Instead, when somebody asks us, how are we, we say, I am fine, thank you. And we ask the other person, he also says, I'm fine, thank you. But every day, every month, every year, every birthday, we are one year inside the mouth of the crocodile. And we are all suffering. 
there is suffering everywhere in this material world wherever we go there is suffering one devotee in the congregation he was part of the devotee community in mumbai and he used to travel a lot to come to the temple and we know how the local trains in mumbai are very interesting fascinating when people enter the local train it is as if there is a kohinoor gem inside they are all jumping and when the station comes they are all jumping as if there is a cobra inside snake ready to chew so everybody is jumping out so this person was frustrated with life in mumbai he said i am going to london comfortable life so he went to london 8:30 after office he sat into an empty bus in mumbai you cannot imagine this after office 8:30 at night getting into an empty bus means only one thing you are dreaming or you are in some other city not in mumbai so after work 8:30 he got into the bus empty he is sitting and the driver is sitting blissful he was thinking i am in vaikuntha so as he was seeing and enjoying this he saw a cctv camera there so he asked the driver why you have cctv camera so the driver said you know see the buses go vacant nobody enters the bus so sometimes some thieves enter daku goon rogues they enter and they get their gun they get their knife they steal pickpocket and sometimes kill also so just so that we know who has killed the cctv camera is there so this person was afraid so the driver said don't worry even if something happens to you your family will get justice don't worry i mean in india if you put cctv camera first they will take the cctv camera out public so seeing all this he told the driver i came to london escaping mumbai to not have problems but after coming here there is more problem i think i was better in mumbai in mumbai there is so much crowd that nobody will come and kill <laughs> at least pocket is lost but nobody will kill so in this way whether it is mumbai whether it is shanghai whether it is los angeles or whether it is london wherever we go problems will continue the crocodile will not leave us sometimes being in india we think america jana chahiye people in america are thinking india jana chahiye so the struggle is there we think by changing places we will be happy but however we change our circumstance if our consciousness doesn't change the crocodile will not leave us crocodile is following <laughs> constantly so problems are there everywhere janma mrityu jara vyadhi doesn't leave us anywhere one person is a big en- engineer but he used to run a coffin business You know coffin? दफनाने के लिए लगाते हैं क्या बोलते हैं हिंदी में उसको कॉफिन को क्या कहते हैं दफनाने के लिए जो देह को लगाते हैं नीचे कॉफिन तो कॉफिन ही यूज टू हैव कॉफिन बिजनेस सो समबडी वेंट एन आस्ट डेम अरे योर इंजीनियर सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियर यू विल बी वर्किंग इन बिग कंपनीज वाई यूर रनिंग दिस कॉफिन बिजनेस If you want to do business you can do other business why coffin business He said coffin business is hit because here market never goes low Continuously somebody or the other is dying So death or the crocodile of suffering and pain continues wherever and Shri Prabhupada would time and again hammer this point One time Shri Prabhupada was in Miami this was the first time Prabhupada was coming to a place called Miami in Florida in the us so prabhupad asked what is the name of the place so the disciple said miami prabhupad said interesting name maya and me <laughs> fascinating combination maya and me and after that prabhupad gave a class on whether you are in mumbai or whether you are in miami maya doesn't leave you the crocodile of maya is always there so the story of gajendra is not simply a story that we read in the Shrimad Bhagavatam and we forget. It is something that we all can relate to. Very, very relevant story. At another instance, Shri Prabhupada was on a morning walk. Ocean beach. 
big place, ocean shore. And the disciple who was walking with Shala Prabhupada said, Prabhupada, look at the ocean. It is so beautiful, isn't it? Shala Prabhupada said, yes, very beautiful, but at a distance. If you go very close, the ocean will take you inside. So they said, yes, but what is the lesson? Prabhupada said, the lesson is, Maya is like this. She looks very attractive from a distance, but as soon as you go close, she will take inside. So one of our devotees went for Jagannath Puri Yatra. And when he went for Yatra, the ocean path, they had snan. So they made announcement. Those who don't know to swim, please don't go beyond this line. And this person was expert swimmer. So he said, I can go anywhere. And he went beyond the line and he went to the other side. And after some time, he started drowning. And nobody realized. He was asking for help. He was doing like this. And all the devotees saw and they thought, Oh, he's happy. He's saying Hari Bol. They also started saying Hari Bol. After some time, he's again doing Hari Bol. They're also saying Hari Bol. Then one Brahmachari said, Are, I think he's doing too much Hari Bol. There is something wrong. So the rescue operator dived, dived inside. And he went and he saved him. Came out. And he asked him, Are, Why did you go there? The person said, I am an expert swimmer, so I thought nothing will happen to me. But I was drowning. And when he went and told his spiritual master, his spiritual master, he said, this is overconfidence. Srila Prabhupada always said, the biggest problem with the devotees of ISKCON is that they don't fear Maya enough. We think, oh, I am chanting, Maya will not touch me. But if we are vigilant, careful, alert, that come what may, I am inside the jaws of the crocodile. The crocodile is not going to leave me. And just like Gajendra called out, I have to call out. If I don't call out, I will not be relieved. The crocodile will not leave me. The crocodile will keep chewing more and more and more and more. But our mind will tell us, Gajendra was in pain, I am not in pain, I am happy. But we have to tell ourselves that teeth, the jaws of Maya are such that some teeth of Maya, when they bite, it is very pleasurable. When Maya, through her teeth of wealth, gives us too much wealth, pleasurable. When Maya, through one of the teeth, gives too much respect and honor and recognition, pleasurable. When Maya gives position in society, pleasurable. But we must understand, this pleasure is not pleasure for the soul. That is also one of the sharp teeth of the jaws of the crocodile of Maya. So therefore, the only way to be free from the crocodile bite is what? Call out to a person who is stronger than the crocodile. His Holiness Sachinandan Swami Maharaj, in one class, he was saying how when he was a child, he had a friend who had a very ferocious dog. So, Srila Sachinandan Maharaj would go to meet his friend as a boy, young boy. And every time he would go, the dog would chase him and would bark and almost come to bite. And Maharaj would palpitate, very afraid and somehow reach the house of the boy. But one day he realized, still when is this dog going to chase me? This dog thinks I am an outsider. Till when is this dog going to chase me? So one day he decided, when the dog starts chasing me, I am going to call to the, my friend, who is who's the master of the dog. So when the dog started chasing, Maharaj called out to his friend and said, Are, tell your dog to be quiet. This dog is chasing me. And as soon as Maharaj's friend came out and told the dog, Are, be quiet, he's my friend. Don't shout, don't bark, don't bite the dog became peaceful. So when Maharaj was saying this, I was thinking, what is the relevance? Because the words that Maharaj was speaking on was Daivi Hesha Gunamai Mama Maya Duratkaya Mame Vaye Prapadhyante Mayam Etam Tarantite Krishna says Daivi Hesha Gunamai Mama Maya Duratkaya That this material nature, problems of this world, three modes of material nature and death, they are very cruel. 
and only those who surrender to Krishna, Maam Eva Ye Prapadhyante. Prapadhyante doesn't mean just approach. Prapadhyante doesn't just mean giving dandavat every day. Prapadhyante means taking our heart and keeping at Krishna's feet. Shraddha means to keep our heart. When we keep our heart on this, we have deep Shraddha on our phone. When we keep our heart to the relations of this world, we have deep Shraddha, faith, attachment. But that day when we keep our heart at the lotus feet of Krishna, end of material existence. So Maharaj, to explain that point, he said, why should we take shelter of Krishna? Because two things, Krishna is stronger than Maya and second, Krishna is the master of Maya. So he said, similarly, my friend was stronger than the dog and was the master of the dog. And as soon as I approached him and he quietened the dog, from that day onwards, the dog didn't trouble me. So similarly, in this example, Krishna is like our friend. And Maya or material nature is like that barking, biting dog, or in this case, the crocodile. Till the time we don't approach Krishna, Hari, Sakshat Bhagavan, Prajendra Nandana Shamasundar, Bhagavan Shri Krishna, this crocodile bite, the strong jaws will never leave us. So therefore we must, the first lesson in our life from the story of Gajendra is that we are all Gajendras in some way or the other. And we are in the pond of this material world, trying to enjoy with our family, friends, wives, children and the crocodile of material nature, the crocodile of time, the crocodile of death, the crocodile of Janma Mrityu Jara Vyadhi, the crocodile of Adi Daivik, Adi Bhautik, Adhyatmik Klesha, the crocodile of everything that exists is fighting us. And part B of the same point is that we will be relieved only and only when we approach Krishna like Gajendra did. How he approached will come to set the second aspect. But in the first aspect, he approached. But how did he approach? What was his mood? Did Gajendra call out to the Lord as, Oh Lord, if you are there, please come. If you are seeing, and if you have the mood, please come. See, I am just calling out to you. I am not in pain. I don't need you. But if you want to come, you come. Did he call out like that? He was calling out with thought, word and deed. With walk, babu. Through actions, through his trunk, he uprooted a lotus and he was offering. Which means seva. Through his senses, he was offering service. What can an elephant do? And the same parallel we find in Draupadi also. She offered her hand in service. Draupadi offered her hand and Gajendra offered the equivalent of his hand, his trunk. And he offered the lotus. Draupadi offered her voice. Hey Krishna, hey Govinda. Hey Krishna, hey Govinda. Hey Krishna, hey Govinda. Draupadi called out. And similarly, Gajendra used his tongue, Vak, to glorify and give stuti. And at the same time, through mind, how was Draupadi and how was how were Draupadi and Gajendra calling out? Was Draupadi in the mood that Krishna, if you want to help, you may help. In fact, I don't even know whether you exist. Was this the mood? When we touch our heart and ask ourselves how our chanting is. Sometimes we doubt everything practically. Am I actually spirit soul? What if I am body? What if I am enjoying? And at the end I realize, Are Baba, I was not spirit soul. I missed the opportunity of enjoying this material world. We doubt everything. We doubt whether I am spirit soul. We doubt whether God exists. If God exists, does He have a form? If He has a form, is it Krishna? And if it is Krishna, is He seeing me? If he is seeing me, is he hearing my prayers? We doubt everything practically. But Gajendra and Draupadi called out to the Lord as their life and soul. They were convinced that Krishna exists, Krishna is seeing me, Krishna is listening to me and more importantly Krishna is here. 
Krishna is not anywhere else. He is here with me, for me. So when our prayers to Krishna, our chanting, our reading of Srimad Bhagavatam, our seva becomes so intense, helpless, desperate, with so much faith, conviction and hopelessness. Krishna, without you, I have nobody. That is when the Supreme Lord comes and the crocodile jaws are opened. One Vaishnava, Sri Vaishnava Acharya, in the Padyavali, he writes, Kshauni patitva mathavaika makincha natvam nityam dadasi pahumanam athapamanam vaikuntha vasa matava narake nivasa maha vasudeva mama nasti gatistvat anya. He says, O Krishna, O Supreme Lord, Kshauni patitvam, make me the king. Athava eka akinchanatvam or make me a beggar, no problem. Nityam dadasi pahumanam, create my life in such a way that I get a lot of respect. Athava apamanam or create my life in such a way that I get only dishonor. So first line, make me king or beggar. Second line, give me lot of respect or give me lot of criticism. Third line, Vaikunta Vasam Athava Narake Nivasam My Lord give me residence in Vaikunta or throw me into hell. But fourth line is important. Ha Vasudeva Mama Na Asti Gati Tvat Anya O Supreme Lord, without you I have nobody else. When we think my money will save me, my children will save me, my family will save me, my insurance, life insurance will save me, my medical insurance will save me, the doctors will save me. Are doctors don't save anybody. Vaidya Raja Namastubhyam Yamaraja Sahodaram Yama tu harati pranan tutva pranan dhanani cha Oh doctors of this world, I bow down to you. You are the brother of Yamaraj. Yama tu harati pranan. Yamaraj takes away life. Tutva pranan dhanani cha. You take life also and money also. So we have this faith that doctors of this world, our money, our family, our country, whatever I am earning will protect me. But alas, 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 we spent 70 years of our life collecting that wealth which doesn't help us. And that prema dhana, bhakti dhana, which actually helps us, we alas, we have no time to collect. So this Acharya is saying, Ha Vasudeva Mama Nasti Gati Stvadanya O Krishna, apart from you, other than you, I have no other shelter, Krishna. So if you want to make me a beggar, you make me a beggar. You want, make, you want to make me a king, you make me a king. You give me a lot of honor, you give me a lot of dishonor. You give me Vaikuntha Vas. Or you give me Naraka Nivas, Krishna, I have no problem. Just keep me close to your lotus feet. Don't forget me, that's all. We find this prayerful mood throughout. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, why are the demigods offering prayers to the womb of Devaki before Krishna's advantage? Why are Manikriva and Nalakuvera offering prayers to Krishna after their liberation? Why is Ruva Maharaj offering prayers? Why is Prahlad Maharaj offering prayers? Why is Vritrasur offering his Chatushloki? Why is Kunti Devi offering her prayers? Why is Bhishma offering prayers? And why is Brahma offering prayers? Sometimes when we see the chapter on prayers, we skip. Prayers chapter are ye voi voi prayer hai. Skip. But nahi hai. Same nahi hai. Sab alag hai. The devotee, the bhakta, is connecting with Krishna through the prayers. And we have to understand that when we have to write a letter to someone, what are the three things important? Kisi ko patra likna ho, to teen chis kya mukhya hai usme? Kya kya chahiye hume? Address, kahaan bhejna hai pehle? Pata. Whom to send it to? Destination address. Second? Substance. क्या भेजना है पत्र भेजना है क्या संदेश भेजना है कंटेंट थर्ड एनवलप टू पुट इट एंड सेंड 
So similarly, when we have to send anything to Krishna, we need three things. First, right address. Krishna. Interestingly, some people put the wrong address. They send it to some Baba or some Guru of this world who himself is in the jaws of the crocodile. If you pray to someone who is in the jaws of the crocodile himself, he cannot save us. He cannot save us. Therefore, in the prayers of Gajendra, we find Gajendra did not call out to any demigod. Because demigods are peaceful. They have long duration. Hmm? Dviparardha Drishna. Brahma Viveti. Markandeya Muni is telling the Naranara and Rishi in 8th chapter of 12th canto that even Brahma, who lives for 311 trillion, 40 billion years, has to come down. Hmm? So, Gajendra is not calling out to the demigods and interestingly, he is not even calling out to Krishna directly. No mention of Hari, Adhokshaja, Madhava, Govinda. He says, Namo Atma Pradipaya. I bow down to he who illuminates from within in all bodies. That is only one personality, Krishna. I bow down to he who is the ultimate shelter for everyone. That is Krishna. I bow down to he who is present everywhere. That is Krishna. I bow down to he who gives ultimate bliss to everyone. That is Krishna, not even the demigods. So indirectly, Gajendra is calling out to Krishna, the Supreme Lord, Vishnu. And he makes this point also very interestingly. Matrik prapanna pashupasha vimokshanaya muktaya bhuri karunaya namolaya. Whom am I calling, O Lord? For my mukti, for my liberation, Gajendra is saying, I am calling out to muktaya. I am, I am calling out to a person who is free from that crocodile. The demigods are also inside crocodile because they are in the material creation. But Krishna, who is beyond time and space, he is the one who is outside the jaws of the crocodile. So muktaya, I call to Krishna, who is outside of problems. He is mukta. And Bhuri Karunaya, he is ready to help, he is filled with mercy. And Krishna showers mercy in unlimited, inconceivable manner. Sometimes we think, Bhagwan ne ye kyu kiya? Agar Bhagwan Karuna ki murti hai, to ye kyu kiya? If Krishna is the embodiment of mercy, to aisa hona chahiye tha, aise kyu kiya? That it should be like this. But the interesting thing is, can we understand Krishna's mercy? Our intellect is only so much and Krishna's mercy is unending. How can the, in, the finite hold the infinite? Krishna's mercy is inconceivable. He showers mercy to Bali by taking away everything. He showers mercy on Sudama by giving everything. So if we say Krishna's mercy is in giving, then Bali is opposite. If we say Krishna's mercy is in taking, then Sudama is opposite. He gives mercy to Hiranyakashipu as death. But he gives mercy to Prahlad as protection. So Krishna's mercy is inconceivable. Dhuri Karunaya. And Krishna is ever ready. Namo Alaya. Hmm? He is saying, I am bowing down to that personality who acts immediately. Krishna doesn't say, okay, you chant and after about 25, 35 lifetimes, I will help you. Immediate. If the calling out is desperate and helpless, ye yatham maam prapadhyante taam stataiva bajamyam. Why will Krishna not help? If Krishna helped Draupadi, when she called out through the holy name. If Krishna helped Gajendra, when he called out through the holy name. When Krishna helped Dhruva, when he called out through the holy name. When Krishna helped Prahlad, when he called out through the holy name. When Krishna is helping so many devotees, when they surrender and really feel that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Shri Krishna, without you I have nobody, please help me. And when they are calling out to thought word and deed, why will Krishna not help? So the right address is important. Calling out to Krishna, Shri Hari. The demigods thought, he didn't call us, we will not go. Krishna thought, he didn't take my name. Or Vishnu thought, he didn't take my name. But from his description, he is actually referring to me. I should go. Dhuri Karunaya. And as Hari Parshat Prabhu was explaining yesterday, 
Krishna was or the Supreme Lord was in so much anxiety and he was rushing to help Gajendra that he didn't even have time to put Asan on top of Garuda. Garuda ko bole chalo, Asan lagane ke liye samay nahi hai. The Lord's charioteer, Daruka is asking, I'll take you. He says, no, I will run and reach. Don't worry. He is not even waiting for the conch shell to blow. The Lord doesn't do anything without conch shell. They are saying, Are conch shell will blow, then you will go. No, you blow later, I am leaving. And that was the time when the Lord was flying faster than Garuda. Garuda was thinking, till then, I am the one who takes the Lord. But Krishna was crushing his pride also. He was flying faster than Garuda. With so much eagerness, I have to save my devotee. Why? Because my devotee anxiety and he was rushed desperate and helpless ye yatham maam prapadhyante taam stataiva bajamyam why will krishna not help if krishna helped draupadi when she called out through the holy name if krishna helped gajendra when he called out through the holy name when krishna helped dhruva when he called out through the holy name when krishna helped pralad when he called out through the holy name when krishna is helping so many devotees when they surrender and really feel that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Shri Krishna, without you I have nobody, please help me. And when they are calling out, who thought what and did, why will Krishna not help? So the right address is important. Calling out to Krishna, Shri Hari. The demigods thought, he didn't call us, we will not go. Krishna thought, he didn't take my name. Or Vishnu thought, he didn't take my name. But from his description, he is actually referring to me, I should go. Ghori Karunaya. And as Hariparshat Prabhu was explaining yesterday, Krishna was or the Supreme Lord was in so much anxiety and he was rushing to help Gajendra that he didn't even have time to put Asan on top of Garuda. Garuda ko bole chalo, Asan lagane ke liye samay nahi hai. The Lord's charioteer, Daruka is asking, I'll take you. He says, no, I will run and reach. Don't worry. He is not even waiting for the conch shell to blow. The Lord doesn't do anything without conch shell. They are saying, Are conch shell will blow, then you will go. No, you blow later, I am leaving. And that was the time when the Lord was flying faster than Garuda. Garuda was thinking, till then, I am the one who takes the Lord. But Krishna was crushing his pride also. He was flying faster than Garuda. With so much eagerness, I have to save my devotee. Why? Because my devotee is calling out to me. So the right address is important. The content is important. Our feeling, our bhav, our prayerful mood is important. And what is the envelope? The envelope of prayers, the envelope of the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, so therefore, simply chanting and simply offering prayers is very good. But it is incomplete if the mood is not there. Just like if I put the right address and I send the envelope, but there is no content inside, what is the use? Krishna is not Nama Grahi. Krishna is not Stotra or Stuti or Stava Grahi. He is Bhava Grahi. Our stotras, our stutis, these prayers, these prarthana, the holy name when we chant, it is the envelope which carries. But our mood is the content. That is what Krishna is tasting. So when we are making garlands for Krishna, we are offering flowers like Gajendra is offering. But is the mood the same? When we are making garlands and offering flowers to Krishna, it is the same as Gajendra is offering. But why is it that when we offer, we are not seeing Krishna coming and wearing it in person. But we find Gaj for Gajendra, he is offering the lotus and the Supreme Lord is coming and accepting. Why? What is the difference? If the Lord can come and take it from the trunk of an animal, why can't he take it from the hands of a human? A devotee who has tilak and kanti. Because we lack that mood, that crying spirit that Gajendra had. There is nobody who has cried for Krishna and has not got him. Whoever cried for help got Krishna. And the time when we really need help and we call out to Krishna in the darkest regions of our time, of our life, 
they are the most auspicious because they invoke Krishna's mercy. One devotee, <coughs> along with other devotees, they went for book distribution. And while returning, they, was, they were coming in a slope and the brake failed. Now imagine if you are coming like 10, 12 devotees in a big jeep hmm, or a truck or whatever you call it and the brakes fail and you know what's coming up. What is your mood at that time? Only one thing you remember. Namaste Narasimhaya And how is that Namaste Narasimhaya? Is it like, you know, Kabhi Kabhi phone dekh liya? Ya baat karte karte narsingarti. Is that how we'll chant when the brakes have failed? We call out to Narasimha Dev with our heart and soul because we realize this is the last Narasimha Aarti of our life. Yes or no? And in that mood when we cry out, that invokes the Lord's mercy. Somehow the driver, he could steer the vehicle and it hit a tree. Instead of total damage, the car was destroyed but all 12 devotees came victorious. They were all saved. So that devotee who sang Nursing Arati, when he was giving class, he said, Dear devotees, I have sung Nursing Arati so many times in my life. But that Nursing Arati was the best. In fact, he was telling me, Prabhu, I really wish that incident happens again and again. I said, Are, why are you saying this? It is not auspicious. He said, no Prabhu, in my life that is the most auspicious event. Because due to that fear, I cried out for the protection of Narasimhadev like never before and never after. I wish every day this happens to me so that I can cry to the Lord. And then he smiled and he said, and I wish every day he saves me also. So in this way we find those times in our life when sorrow comes in, when there is pain, when there is suffering, instead of crying and taking sympathy from people around who don't solve our problems, if we cry out to Shri Shri Radha Rasbihari, if we cry out to Gornitai, if we fall at the feet of Shri Ram, why will we not, we not be protected? Abhayam Sarvada Tasmai Dadami etat vratam mama. Sri Ram, he said, Sakrid eva prapannoyam. He who comes to me, surrenders to me, cries out to me and says, I am yours, my Lord. To that person, abhayam sarvada tasmai. Dadami etat vratam mama. I fill him with so much protection that he, he will forget what fear is. So Gajendra and Draupadi called out. That was the envelope. They called out to the right address, Shri Hari. But what was the content? The content was their bhav, their helpless mood. So when we read Srimad Bhagavatam, that is the envelope. When we make garlands, it is our envelope. When we perform Arati, it is our envelope. Hmm? When we chant Harinam and do Kirtan, that is our envelope. But in all these activities, the content is our helpless mood. If we think every day, every situation, I am Gajendra, I am bleeding, but still I am thinking I am okay. The crocodile is biting me, chewing me, sinking with the sharp teeth and jaws inside my body. But alas, I have no taste for Krishna. I have no attachment to Krishna. Krishna, please save me. And the Supreme Lord is saying, Ami bina bandhuar ke achhe tumar. Apart from me, whom do you have anyway? But we are thinking, Krishna, you can wait. Prabhu, we should become a devotee. Oh, I can become devotee later. First business. Prabhu, you should read Bhagavad Gita. I can read Bhagavad Gita later. First wealth. Because our mindset is, Krishna has been waiting for so many lifetimes. He will wait. He knows to wait. But my wealth, my business cannot wait. My exams cannot wait. When we make Krishna our priority, when we do things for Krishna, other things secondary. Srila Prabhupada would say about his father, Srila Gaur Mohande, who, had a, who was a cloth merchant. He said, my father's main business was puja and side business was cloth. So similarly in our life, when our main priority, our main business is crying out for the mercy of Krishna, that's when Krishna descends. We all have to work. Even Mother Yashoda had to sweat. Swinnam Vaktram. She had to sweat 
run, try, cry, then Damodar was bound. Otherwise impossible. So what to speak of us? So this is the second point. First point, realizing we are all Gajendras. Second point, understanding that the crocodile will open its mouth and we'll get protection only when we put the right address in the right envelope with the right mood. And the third point <clears throat> and the last point for this discussion is the unlimited inconceivable mercy of Krishna. Look at the fortune of Gajendra. Gajendra had not performed any bhakti in that life. In his previous life, he was King Indra Dhyumna, who was cursed by Agastya Rishi. King Indra Dhyumna, due to some act, indirectly offended Agastya Muni. And Agastya Muni, he said, your activities are dull. And therefore, in your next life, you will become an elephant. King Indra Dhyumna is so exalted. Agastya Muni cursed. Similarly for the crocodile, crocodile was Gandharva Huhu in his previous life, interesting name Huhu <laughs> and he was cursed by a sage called Devala, he was a Rishi, they both went to the river, holy river and when Devala Rishi was performing Gayatri, this Gandharva out of fun, he pulled the leg of Devala Rishi Then Devala Rishi said, you are such a rascal, I am performing Gayatri and you are troubling me in the water. Therefore I curse you. You will trouble everyone being in the water. May you be a crocodile. So Indra Dhyumna Maharaj became crocodile. Who, who beca um, Indra Dhyumna Maharaj became Gajendra. Who, who became crocodile. But what is striking and what touched me when I was reading this section is the fact that Gajendra forgot Krishna in his life. But Krishna never forgot him. Krishna never forgets anyone. And what to speak of those who perform bhakti once? Neha bikrama nashosti pratyavayo na vidyate swalpa mapyasya dharmasya trayate mahato vayat. The Gita explains somebody who performs simple, sincere, serious, strict, honest, heartfelt, desperate, helpless service to Krishna, Krishna never forgets him, hundred lifetimes also ahead. Vata di yadi doshena mad bhakta mamcha nacha smaret aham smarami mad bhakto nayami paramam gatim. In the Puranas it is said, what happens to a devotee who performs bhakti all his life but at the time of death because of the pain of his body, he is not able to remember Krishna. Kabhi kabhi ye ho sakta hai, you know? He can think that Ajivan bhakti karke, all my life I am performing bhakti. Mrityu ke kaal mein agar bhagwan ka smaran na ho to, agar hum bhagwan ko bhool gaye to, what happens if all my life I perform bhakti and I still forget Krishna at the time of death? There is so much pain that I am not able to remember him. Adhya Slok says, Aham smarami mag bhakto. Krishna is saying, even if my devotee forgets me, no problem. I will come. I remember my devotee. I remember each and every devotee. So why should we fear whether we remember Krishna at the time of death or no? It's beyond our control. But now when the body is sane, it is healthy. This moment, in this human form of life, when our senses are working, why not call out to Krishna? Aham smarami, Krishna says. And interestingly, Krishna doesn't just record and remember the devotee. At the right time when Gajendra was in pain, Krishna as Paramatma invoked the remembrance of the Lord from within. The Lord could have just said, okay, I remember Gajendra, theek hai. But he didn't just say that. He records, remembers and helps the devotee recollect. Gajendra out of nowhere, all his life, never attended Mangalarti. Never chanted Japa, never had any Sadhu Sangha, but in his previous life, he performed Bhakti because of which Krishna helped him when he needed help. Out of nowhere, Gajanta is speaking Sanskrit prayers. Sanskrit mein stuti kar rahe Bhagwan ki. 
Asambhav. How can an elephant do this? Have you ever seen an animal talk? And that to speak in Sanskrit and that to glorify the Lord? And those prayers which are chanted till today, Gajendra Moksha is celebrated even today. How is it possible? Because of Krishna. Because of the Supreme Lord's mercy, He remembered Gajendra. He recorded Gajendra's activity. He remembered him, helped him recollect. Matta Smriti Jnanam Apohanam Cha. Krishna says, from me comes remembrance, knowledge and forgetfulness. And most importantly, He doesn't stop there. These are the four R's that the Lord deals with. All our activities, He records, He remembers, helps us recollect, and most importantly, when we call out to Him, He rescues also. We pray to Him. He remembers us. He in, in, induces remembrance from within. And when we chant, He comes and helps also. Who does this? Only Hari does. Only Krishna does. What mercy? But one thing that touched me the most in this past time was one place I was reading. Could be a commentary or a realization of a great Vaishnava. He says, the Supreme Lord came running. Ashu, in this verse, we find immediately. Hmm? He say those pandits or those kavis who can compose poetry immediately are called Ashu Kavi or Asu Kavi. Because they can compose immediately. Krishna is Bhuri Karunaya. He has so much mercy and he comes Ashu immediately. What touched me the most when I was reading is the fact that he came, he pulled Gajendra and the crocodile out with his chakra. He killed the crocodile and relieved Gajendra. But the fascinating thing is, he liberated the crocodile first. <laughs> Gajendra is calling out to the Lord. The Lord could have given liberation to Gajendra first. But the chakra hits the crocodile and the crocodile first gets liberated. One great Vaishnava, he writes, The crocodile had indirectly heard the importance of Sadhu Sangha. Had heard the importance of associating with a great devotee. And the crocodile was thinking, I can never go out and take Sadhu Sangha. Because crocodile is the species of water. An elephant is the species of land and therefore we find the struggle of Gajendra and the crocodile. It's like if there is one cricket team playing another in home ground, then there is home ground advantage. So here crocodile is in its home ground and Gajendra is out of home ground. So therefore crocodile got stronger and stronger and Gajendra got weaker and weaker. So crocodile could never come out. So he was thinking, sadhus are outside, I am inside the water, how can I get sadhu sangha? But when Gajendra entered, crocodile realized, Are, he is not just king of elephants, he is even king of Vaishnavas. He himself is coming inside. I have to associate with him. And how do you associate with a Vaishnav? You fall at his feet and you never let him go. Pada dhuli ara, bhakta pada jal, bhakta bhukta avashesho tini mahabal. The Chaitanya Charitamrit says you associate with the Vaishnav by taking the dust from the lotus feet of Vaishnav, by drinking the charanamrit of the Vaishnav, and partaking in the remnants of the Vaishnav. This is the external meaning. The internal meaning is taking the dust from the feet of Vaishnav means taking their instructions. Vani, Siksha. Taking the Charanamrita of a Vaishnava means drinking Hari Katha through the ears from their lips. Pibata, Bhagavata Rasamalai. And taking the remnants of their prasad means taking the attachment that they have for Krishna little into our heart. So, crocodile thought, I can't take his remnants. He, by touching the water, the whole water is Charanamrita. I can drink any time. But Padadhuli I can get only now. So he caught Gajendra's feet to get that Padadholi. And Krishna, the Supreme Lord, uh, he is saying, Aham bhakta paradhino yas svatantra ivodvija sadhu vir ghrastha ridayam bhakta ir bhakta janapriya. That, oh dear devotee, I am conquered by my devotees, but I am more conquered by the devotees of my devotees. So Gajendra is offering stuti. He is my devotee. But this crocodile, 
directly, indirectly is holding the feet of this great Vaishnava. Oh, I have to liberate him first. Therefore, we find in the Ramayana, Lakshman is great. But Valmiki, he writes, greater than Lakshman is Shatrugna. Because Lakshman was the servant of Sri Ram. But Shatrugna was the servant of Bharat, who was the devotee of Ram. So, Lakshman is the devotee of the Lord, while Shatrugna is the devotee of the devotee of the Lord. Dasa Dasa Anudas. And therefore, Shatrugna is the silent hero. So, the Lord liberated Crocodile. Now, the point could be, well, the mood of the Crocodile was not favourable. But the Lord doesn't care about it. Putana appeared for what? To kill the Lord. But the Lord liberated Putana. His Holiness Radha Govind Maharaj in one, one Katha, he said very beautifully, he said, Hamare jagat mein, jab log aake hume amrit pilate hain, to hum unhe wish de dete hain. Is jagat mein log jab aake hume amrit ki bunde de dete hain, to hum unko wish de kar maar dete hain. Par Bhagawan ki karuna ko dekho, jisko wish pilane aai, us putana ko Bhagawan ne amar kar diya. So this is the mercy of the Lord. Aho bakiyam stana kala kutam. The Lord doesn't see favorable, unfavorable. You approach Him, you get purified. It's like holding the electric wire, live wire, open wire. Whether you're a child, whether you're an old man, whether you're male, female, whether you know, you don't know, you hold, you're electrocuted. Similarly, as soon as you hold the electric wire of the Lord's mercy, all the sins are destroyed. And the last part of the discussion is that Crocodile was liberated because of this, but why was Gajendra bleeding? Crocodile is causing harm to a Vaishnava. Yes? The crocodile is holding the feet of Gajendra and this is paining for the devotee. So the Acharya writes that Gajendra is such a Mahanubhav, great Vaishnava, that to give liberation to crocodile, he is ready to bleed. <laughs> Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said to make one devotee we have to give gallons and gallons and liters and liters of sweat and blood. So Gajendra is ready to plead to give liberation to the crocodile. He is thinking I can be liberated anytime but this crocodile it's now or never. He is holding no problem. It's paining for me no problem. Krishna save him. So in this way our spiritual superiors our Siksha Gurus, our Diksha Guru, our Bhat Pradashak Guru and senior ocean of Vaishnavas, they are all like Gajendras. And sometimes we like the crocodile are biting and disturbing them. But they are ready to plead to uplift us. So in this mood, let us be Gajendra and crocodile both. In what way? Let us be Gajendra in the spirit of helpless calling out for the mercy of the Lord. And let us be the crocodile in the spirit that let us never leave the lotus feet of pure Vaishnavas away in our life. Let us always hold it through mouth, through hand and in our heart. Hare Krishna.